Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Blood Music by Greg Bear is a short science fiction novel broken into five sections which vary in length. The interphase, the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase, the telephase, and the interphase thought universe. Blood Music was published fully in 1985. The entire novel takes place over the course of less than a year. Something was introduced to Earth, a kind of infection. It changes humankind, forcing evolution. This video will have spoilers for Blood Music, so if spoilers is a thing that you care about, then you might want to not watch this video. This book deals with themes surrounding the concept of grey goo and nanotechnology. It also deals with the concepts of consciousness, reality, artificial intelligence, and the integration of technology and biological life. Blood Music also explores some similar themes to Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke and Blind Sight by Peter Watts, both of which I've also covered on this channel. In my video on the Hegemonizing Swarm and Ian Banks's Culture series, we also specifically discuss the concept of Grey Goo. The themes explored in this novel have been explored in many other science fiction books, but this book specifically highlights the horrors that could potentially arise from bioengineering, and also contains elements of body horror. The novel begins when a scientist by the name of Virgil Ulim creates biological computers based on his own cells. The specific cells he used to model these on are called lymphocytes. These are a type of immune cell produced in bone marrow and found in blood and lymph tissue. He named his creations Neucytes. It was based on a combination of the word lymphocytes and the Greek word for mind, nous. Because his research was being shut down, Virgil attempts to smuggle his creations out of the company by injecting them into his own body. This of course does not go the way he expected. The new sites once injected begin to evolve extraordinarily fast, developing not only intelligence but self-awareness, real consciousness. They alter their own genetic material within Virgil to create an entire civilization on a nano scale. As the civilization progresses, it alters its host eventually correcting genetic defects, improving intelligence, strength, and eyesight. Every aspect is altered and improved upon by the sentient organisms living in his blood. I don't wear glasses, my back doesn't hurt, I haven't had an allergy attack in four months, and I haven't been sick. I used to get infections all the time in my sinuses because of the allergies. No colds, no infections, nothing. I've never felt better. So, altered smart lymphocytes are inside you, finding things, changing them. He nodded. And by now each cluster of cells is as smart as you or I. You didn't mention clusters. They used to cram together in the medium, maybe a hundred or two hundred cells. I never could figure out why. Now it seems obvious. They cooperate. Edward stared at him. I'm very tired. The way I see it, I lost weight because they improved my metabolism. My bones are stronger. My spine has been rebuilt. Your heart looks different. At this point in the novel, even with their seeming improvements, Virgil remarks that in this stage, which would prove to be an extremely early stage, the new sites had not yet made it to his brain, and only had an understanding of the endocrine system, and yet at this point they were already in the billions, perhaps trillions. Virgil is unsettled by the creatures initially. He mentions that one night he awoke to find that his skin had begun to crawl as the creatures moved around in it. Virgil believes that the creatures wanted to get into his skin because it would be the easiest way for them to run circuits for communication across the surface. They would need this once they discovered the true function of his brain. The fact that the creatures were exploring his skin would indicate that they were close to understanding him fully. Eventually the creatures begin to leave his skin and explore the outside. It's coming from my skin. They're not telling me everything, but I think they're sending out scouts. Hey, astronaut scouts, yeah. He looked at Edward with an expression that didn't quite cross over into concern, more like curiosity as to how he'd take it. Edward's stomach muscles tightened as if waiting for a second punch. He had never seriously considered the possibility 
until now, not consciously. Perhaps because he had been concentrating on simply believing, focusing on more immediate problems. Is this the first time? Initially, Virgil's colony could not survive outside his body. They could not be transferred to other life because they had been based on his own cells. Seeking a practical use for the organisms, an attempt is made to develop a similar organism that will not trigger an immune response in other animals, essentially a kind of infection. But the ramification of a sentient infection was not considered, and it goes horribly wrong. The lab-generated infection gets out of hand, and of course begins to spread rapidly. It's a disease, isn't it? She said. Edward nodded. That's what Virgil made. The disease that thinks. I'm not sure there's any way to fight an intelligent plague. A disease that is intelligent is fundamentally different from any other disease. An intelligent disease can act based on observation. It can preserve knowledge and make educated decisions. If non-intelligent diseases are already a problem for mankind, imagine the effect that an intelligent one may have. The process of diseases spreading normally is not totally random. Diseases have evolved to spread from host to host efficiently. But the process is, in fact, unguided. A guided process would be disastrous, especially when considering the concentration of intelligence within these particular organisms. In blood music, the disease spreads at a lightning fast speed, and all of the Northern American biosphere is assimilated. A new civilization arises out of ultra-evolved new sites and assimilated human beings. The civilization expands so greatly that it ultimately is forced to limit its growth. Its continued expansion would destroy the entire Earth. And the reason behind this is supposedly loosely related to the concept known as the Anthropic Principle. A hypothesis proposed in 1957. The Anthropic Principle is also sometimes referred to as the Observation Selection Effect. The Anthropic Principle is used to explore the notion that the universe seems finely tuned for the existence of life. Essentially, the hypothesis states that the universe appears finely attuned for life because if the constraints and the parameters of the universe were even slightly different, life would not exist. The range of potential observations that we can make about the universe is limited by the fact that the observations can only happen in a universe capable of developing life that is intelligent in the first place. Greg Bear in Blood Music seems to be using the strong anthropic principle, which essentially says that the universe is in some sense compelled to eventually have consciousness emerge, and essentially observers are necessary to bring the universe into being. In Blood Music, the new sites and assimilated humans are forced to expand beyond normal space and into a realm of pure consciousness. This will be the only way to avoid the problems that such a concentration of consciousness would have on the physical world. Because of what I've been saying, there are too many of them already. If they were to expand beyond that radius, they would create something very peculiar, a portion of space-time much too closely observed. The territory would not be able to evolve. Too many brilliant theorists, don't you see? There would be a kind of frozen state, a breakdown on the quantum level, a singularity, a black hole of thought. Time would be severely distorted, and the effects would destroy the Earth. I suspect they have limited their growth realizing this. The entire Earth would eventually be moved into an entirely different plane of existence, beyond human understanding. This ending is very reminiscent, in my opinion, of childhood's end. Mankind's evolution is forced upon them by a different race of beings, and ultimately they move beyond the physical world into a higher plane of existence. What's distinct about blood music, however, is that the invader in this case takes the form of a disease created by mankind itself. This falls into a common trope in science fiction, where humankind, through our lack of forethought, is ultimately our own self-destructor. It has to be addressed, however, that the new sites evolved into a race of beings just as intelligent, if not more so, than our own. 
yes they are alive because of us, but other organisms are responsible for our continued existences. What in the end justifies our survival over their own? Humanity is of course not eliminated entirely in the end, merely our form changes. Humanity in the end is preserved, but not in the way we would have imagined, but perhaps far more concretely than we could have ever done alone. The final lines of the book are, Nothing is lost, nothing is forgotten. It was in the blood, the flesh, and now it is forever. Blood Music is a great read, but it definitely feels like a science fiction book that was written in the 80s. It covers concepts and ideas which we have seen explored a lot of times since, but still has its own way of exploring those ideas. All in all, Blood Music is a compelling science fiction thriller with some pretty awesome and mind-blowing concepts and an edge of post-apocalyptic horror. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Also check out our Patreon as it is the best way to support this channel. Thanks so much.